Well, bicycle lubricants can be expensive these days and chain lubricants are no exception. A lot of chain lubricants nowadays are going wax-based, which is actually nothing new because they've been around for decades, but they seem to be coming back in repackaged forms. Why wax? Well, wax is very slippery. It's got a very low coefficient. It sticks to metal really, really well. It repels water and dirt excellently and stays clean. It'll keep your whole drivetrain nice and clean and efficient. But the way they package it and make it these days, a small bottle like that, 120 mil, can cost you between 10 and 15 dollars. And since we put it on quite liberally to get it into the pins and rollers of your chain, it can be quite expensive on your pocket. So, wouldn't it be nice to make a homemade version for a lot cheaper? Well, you certainly can. 80 cents or less for the similar sort of bottle. How's that? In this video, I'm going to show you how to make it. It's really easy. Let's go and do it. So the things you're going to need to make your wax are a small pot or a pan to put on your stove to melt the wax, a small funnel, a glass jar to put your liquid wax in when you finish. This is an old coffee jar. The wax itself is just ordinary household paraffin wax candles. Paraffin oil, you need paraffin oil. You can use baby oil. Or which is known as mineral oil, but it tends to be very messy and doesn't uh, stick us to the chain very well. Paraffin oil is much better. Then you'll need xylene. Xylene's the medium which it's all going to float in. Um, you can get xylene at the hardware store in the paint section or probably at a paint shop. Um, so xylene. If you can't get xylene where you live, you can try uh, mineral turpentine will work. It's not as good, not as quick acting, and doesn't dry as efficiently as xylene on your chain. So xylene is much better. Lastly, but not leastly, you find all your squirty bottles to apply it to your chain. Uh, that's a small one there, and this, uh, this is a dishwashing liquid bottle, which I no longer use, so I'm using it uh, to put the liquid wax in to apply to the chain. So let's go now to the kitchen to make our brew. So we're going to make enough wax to fill this 200ml jar and the mixture is a third of each of these ingredients. Firstly, we combine the candle wax with the liquid paraffin. Here I'm making a little bit more than actually fits in the jar. So I'm using one and a half candlesticks. Put it on a low heat. We'll just speed up the video a bit. And then when they're completely melted, you just remove the wicks. Pour in the right amount of paraffin oil and keep stirring slowly until it's a complete mixture. Using a kitchen knife is a good idea because you'll need to test the consistency of your wax before you put it into your jar. Remove the knife from the mixture and let it cool down to room temperature. Cooling it under cold water on the tap is a quick way of doing it. Here you can see how good the wax is at repelling water. It's great for your chain. So here's the knife with the wax on the end. This is a very important step, checking the consistency of the wax because this is what will be left inside your chain as the lubricant. Rub your finger along the wax. You should only just be able to smudge it on the knife. The top diagram is scrapings of the wax from the saucepan when it's cold. Note you can still smudge the wax pits into the cardboard. The bottom diagram shows the wax about the consistency of toothpaste. So try and get the consistency of your wax somewhere in between these two extremities. If you need to adjust the consistency, you can always add it back into the saucepan, reheat it and then either add more candle wax or paraffin oil according to which consistency you want. Once you're happy with your wax consistency, get your jar, in this case 200ml, and preheat it under some hot water. Just the ordinary hot water from the tap will do.
completely dry the jar. I'm just using an ordinary household tissue. And now pour the hot wax into the jar. This is where a funnel comes in handy. And so we're going to fill it to about two thirds full. That's just over 130 milliliters. Finally, fill up the rest of your jar with xylene. It doesn't matter whether you do this when the wax is hot or cold. And that's your jar of wax lubricant. Now the next thing is to put some in a squirty bottle so you can apply it to your chain. All done. How simple is that? If your wax goes hard like this, it's because the ambient air temperature is cold. Temperature does affect the viscosity of your wax lubricant. But don't panic, you just need to warm it up a bit. Here's some hot water in a pot. And stand it in the pot for about five minutes. Sometimes your wax lubricant can look like this. It looks like it's separating in its mixture, but it's not. It's just halfway between hot and cold. There we go, it's all liquid now, all ready to use. So the one thing to remember of course is before you put your wax based lubricant on your chain is to clean it thoroughly. The cleaner you make your chain before you put the wax on the better. Strip all the previous lubricant off as best you can down to raw metal. And even then, once it's stripped right down, re-lubricate it with the wax as soon as possible because you risk oxidization of the metal on the chain itself. So to get the maximum benefit of your wax-based lubricant, strip your chain of all the previous lubricant. And then once you've got your wax base on your chain, from then on it's easier to just keep reapplying new wax whenever you need to. One of the best ways of getting the wax lubricant into your chain is to bathe it in the hot mixture of candle wax and paraffin oil. Once you've done that for about three or four minutes, the chain's ready to come out. Here you can see the wax is starting to cool down, but still wear gloves because the chain itself can still be quite hot. And now give your chain a good wipe down with a clean cloth and wipe in both directions. The result will be a super clean chain and well lubricated. If you can't take your chain off your bike, clean the chain as best you can on your bike. Then use your new wax lubricant and apply it liberally as you pedal your chain slowly. This way it gets into the rollers and the pins of your chain. And this will also be the way you're going to lubricate your chain from now on with the liquid wax in a bottle. And now with the clean rag, keep wiping the chain until it's completely clean. Leaving lubricant on the outside of the chain is of no use whatsoever. And don't worry, your chain won't rust. There'll always be a fine layer of wax on the outside of the chain anyhow. And there you go, perfectly clean and perfectly lubricated and you'll never have to go back to expensive or messy lubricants ever again. So I put the wax based lube both on the mountain bike and on my road bike and the mountain bike done two rides. The first ride with the guys was pretty messy and I cleaned the bike but I purposely did not clean the drive tram, left it as it was and I got the second ride out of it really well. In fact, I could get a third ride out of this and I've never got that before with, a, with any chain lube and it's still smooth and it's still fairly clean so that's amazing and on the road bike uh, on the third ride I've done three rides so uh, it's really really clean really smooth uh, on the road bike you can sense sometimes you can sort of feel or hear as you're riding that the chain needs lubricating are we a little bit more pedantic with our road bikes I think we might be than our mountain bikes um, but I haven't had that I will do it on the fourth time I'll lubricate it um, but I just amazed how it stays smooth for so long so plus plus 
And here's a close-up of the drivetrain on my road bike after an 80k ride. It was amazingly clean and didn't need lubricating. And the chain rings, they were almost spotlessly clean too. But surely professionally made lubricants are better than a homemade lubricant? Or are they? Recently, Jason Smith in his Friction Facts Lab did comprehensive testing on chain lubricants. The top 30 lubricants with the least friction are represented on this chart. And the lubricant which presented with the least friction? Paraffin Wax. So there you go, that's how you make your wax-based lubricant at home. When you've done it once, you'll get the hang of it. It's really easy. So why would you use oil-based lubricants? Well, we've been using oil-based lubricants for so long, we get used to just putting oil on the chain or whatever it is, and you get some fancy lubes, which are oil-based anyhow. Same thing. It spreads everywhere, it gets too thin, it doesn't last long, it gets all over you, all over the drive trans, messy and inefficient. So wax is much better. Number one, it extends the life of your chain. If it does that, it extends the life of your rear cogs and your front chain rings as well. Not only that, it stays cleaner than all your oil-based lubes. Anyhow, double win. And it's in all conditions, dirt and wet, the whole lot. So make yourself a batch. I made two jars like that of it. Share it around with your mates, put in some squirty bottles, and then you'll have the best chain lube ever. Not only will you save money, on the lube itself, but also on the wear and tear of your drivetrain.